Welcome to the What's Your Revolution show, a show for men and the people who love them, where we discuss how men can find and embrace the revolution within themselves, where people can find and embrace the revolution within themselves. I am your host, Dr. Charles Corpru. What's good, revolutionaries? I hope all is well with you. If you remember last year, revolutionaries, my guest today, and we're we going to get it all out of the way, my, my guest, Kishana Palmer, uh, came on last year. And we had a wonderful conversation entitled how to have a healthy, how to be healthy in a healthy relationship from Kishana's perspective. <laughs> I need to go back and actually relabel that from Kishana's perspective. Uh, That's right. In the Kishana verse. In, in, in the Kishana verse. Uh, you all made it one of the most listened to shows that we've ever had on the What's a Revolution show. It was actually number two most listened show last year. And this so sister crazy. is a force. She is a formidable force to be reckoned with in the world. I will let her detail all of her accolades. She is a wonderful friend, a wonderful, wonderful friend that may not come out today because she is coming for me all the yeah. time. <laughs> Every time she sees, she is coming for me. But she is a, an amazing friend, a wonderful thought leader, a wonderful progressive leader in the world who is moving in spaces. And she even has her own tagline, which is what you do what in the world, Kishana? I help everyday leaders just like you live well so you can lead well. There you go. See, see, you yeah. know, listen to that voice. Did you hear that? You know, <laughs> how, her, how her tone dropped a little bit. She was like, I'm talking That's to right. Dr. Corp. Yes. Yes, yes. I am. I'm going to be my midnight love voice. I oh, surely will. Yeah. See, see how we do. Because I've been talking all week. <laughs> mm, mm, I like that. I like that. I like, you're going to get, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble with talking to you. See. Hello. <laughs> um, the revolutionaries. You know, the things that Kishana dropped on that last show is we talked about what it was like to actually sit and be the healthiest yeah. version of yourself in a healthy relationship and why it seems to be so tough out here in these streets to be able to find the relationship, particularly if you're single past a certain age and the work that we actually have to do. And it's important to me. We've had a number of shows really detailing, you know, how do we actually deal with our trauma? Uh, how do we actually, you know, when we get inside of these relationships, how do we actually work through to mitigate that trauma and then show yeah. up for ourselves and show up for the people that we're in relationships with? But the interesting thing, and at some point during this conversation, is that if you're out here, whether you're in, you're single or you're out here in the streets, is that how do you actually date? What does that actually look like to to date when you find someone that you like or when you are just trying to figure out who that person is? What does actually healthy dating look like? And so I wanted to bring my good friend, this beautiful queen, this this thought leader, this amazing human in the world back to the yeah, show. Because we, so we, exactly. We, we we ended that show because she was like, yo, men don't know how to date. And I was like, what? Oh. Wait. And so for almost a year now, I've been trying to figure out, do I actually know how to date? So we're going we, we to gonna figure that out. But so welcome back to the show, this lovely queen, Kishano Palmer. <laughs> How are you? I am well. What's up, revolutionaries? It is always an honor to be among some really dope men and humans in the world. So I'm listen, I don't know how many women you have on this show, but I am happy to be in the number. Yes, so you, are, you, are, you are in the number. You are definitely in number. that in, number. People will be like, number. I actually am putting together a an episode with all of the dope sisters that have actually been dope sisters, dope queens that have actually been on the show. Uh, right. Big, 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 big shout out to Joyce Chen, uh, who came out and really talked about how do we how do we actually form and build and live our most exquisite life. If you have not heard that episode, Joyce Chen is a wonderful thought leader like this queen we have yes. here, uh, former head of production at Meta and now a coach for the Conscious Leadership Group who is amazing. But really, if you're thinking, if we're thinking about dope women that have been on the show, check out that episode with Joyce Chen. Uh, so as good. this queen says, she's just happy to be here. What's going on in your world, Kishana? What is, what is going on? Let's, let's just start there. What's, what is going on with you? Yes, I am in these streets. Joking, mm. I'm joking aside. I finally <laughs> went to Miami. For, that was not for work. And at my big age, having not ever experienced spring break, I was what? at the tail end of the spring break. And so not when the college students are there, when the people who work at the Amazon distribution center <laughs> and the Walgreens, like when they take their spring break, that's the crowd that was there. No no shade to that. Like, because people have to work honestly, but it was a different crowd. Okay, I want you really? to know it was a different crowd. People spent all their return checks uh, <laughs> to be hanging there. And I realized that I do not have the stamina and the stomach for the level of alcohol 
mm. that was imbibe. laid out on the table. That imbibe. Really? No. Imbibe. No. Mm -mm. Mm. That and I realized I cannot look men directly in the eye because evidently if I look them in the face, they're like, you want me? You talking to me? <laughs> No, no, sir. I was I was looking at the map, and I, I wear glasses, so I really can't see that well. <laughs> but wait a minute. Here, here's the thing. We've we've been taught, right? This is what this is how we've been taught. If you're really out here in these streets, right? Right. You know, is that you make sure that you have a gaze, right? You, that you, you you should be able to keep a woman's gaze, or the person that the person that you're wanting to keep their gaze, because there's a theory or there's an evolutionary theory that if you don't keep the person that you're attracted to gays, right, then they think that you might be weak or that you're less than, right? Because you, have, uh, you are afraid or shy and that people that you're attracted to want to see the strength. And so you keep that gaze. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, listen, I'm gonna go with that, okay? But the amount of times I had to tell a brother to please stop taking, first of all, let me tell y'all before we say, because I'm just asking what I'm doing. What I'm doing is helping people live their best lives. I would like all of the gentlemen of the world to please stop taking pictures in your camera with your head face down so we can see your nostrils. I need y'all to hold the phone above your head, make sure your nose hairs a clip, and look up at the camera because the amount of serial killer poses that y'all post on these good internets, I am unclear. So that's the reason why we're not looking you in the eye because you look like you might bury my body. <laughs> Wait. I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait. I, don't under I just don't understand. Uh, so is is this like dating app pictures? This this is just this like... Dating app pictures. This is like when the guys be like, yo, send me a picture of yourself. Were the six photos I had on the internet, like that was not enough? Like, you know, you could actually Google me. We want current... We want, lo, yo, we want current photos. Like real right. time. Like, like Except right y'all photos be four years old. Okay? And fuzzy <laughs> and cut the group, and in the group shot. Like, you want me to play Where Is Waldo? On the, on the shot. Like, no, this is ridiculous. So I've been out in the streets talking to lots of people and actually um, at just about at the end of my wellness coach certification, um, because I realized that I teach a lot about relationships at work. Right. And I've been learning a lot about personal relationships because I think that how you do one thing is how you do lots of things. And so what are the like um, the through lines that I can draw between what I teach about how to be a dialed in leader and um, team member at work and the relationships you have there and the relationships you have at home and in your love relationships. So mm. I do that. And then I'm trying to get my child out the house because y'all I'm about to be free. Um, <laughs> so my one and done. Give us Not only free. is my womb Give closed, us but the, yes, but the child's room is a guest room. I mean, like it is, Hey, well, Somebody asked me the other day couple that now. if I wanted to, um, if I was going to get married again. First of all, I don't know. Second of all, can I, if we get married, can you live across the street though? <laughs> yes, we talked Talk about, about that. Li li literally, hey, literally. Look, I want to pull back for a second. I want to sure. pull back because it's it's really important to 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 unpack this. Is that yeah. you said that how we do one thing is how we do a lot of things, and. It says that you've learned a couple of things in, in your wellness coaching that you actually are moving into yeah. what you do professionally. What are some of the what are some of the tenets or strategies that you've learned in your wellness coaching yeah. that you can move into people who want to show up in a healthy relationship? What are some of the things that you can give? Yeah. To us? So to me, there are like five points of wellness that you think about. So there's your emotional wellness. There's your physical wellness. There's your spiritual wellness. There's your financial wellness. And then there's community. That's mm. well-being. Right, right. And one of the things that has really stuck out to me is that your physical wellness, what you put in your body, how you take care of yourself, um, how you condition your body, how you move, has so much of an effect on all of the other things. And the men that I am engaging with and talking to and having conversations with, I have noticed consistently that men who are taking care of themselves if you have the capacity to take care of yourself, then you have the capacity to take care of me. So mm. if you're not focusing on making sure your mind is right, making sure your body is moving, making sure you're putting good stuff, what you eat in your body, particularly at our age, then it stands to, to see that like, maybe you also will treat me poorly too. Right. And mm. it might be a stretch. Okay. 
Right. But what I've seen is if you don't take care of yourself, then where is the confidence that I'm supposed to be developing that you will also take care of me? Because mm -hmm. I am um, modern light. <laughs> Mo what, what does that mean? Modern, modern light. Modern adjacent. Okay. <laughs> I still have lots of traditional gender norms that I do believe in. And mm -hmm. I know that lots of us do not, but I do. Um, and so if I believe that even in a dating um, and in a healthy relationship that the man that I'm with is supposed to lead out, then leading out doesn't just look like you get to tell me what to do. I got to listen to you. So, no. How do you govern yourself? Mm. How do you handle yourself as a man? Do you have a level of industriousness that allows me to believe that you will get it out the mud? Right. That is a very important right. value to me. Are you, do you have integrity with your word? Right? Are you impeccable with your word? Um, and not yeah. just to me, but to yourself. Right. And I think agreements. that's the thing that, right. And so I think that that's the thing for me that I'm seeing a lot around wellness is like, are you actually taking care of yourself? And that's not just for brothers. That's for women too. Some of us are out here nipping and tucking and then going to eat a six piece. <laughs> yo, it, yo, let me just stop there for a second. Yo, it, it look, it's not fair. It's not fair. What's that? Fair. It's not fair. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not. It's, it is not fair. <laughs> the way that it, literally we can go out, like literally we can go out on a date. You you look in one way, and let's just say the date goes well. It, it goes out. It goes. Mm -hmm. as, it goes as planned. <laughs> you would be like, turn out the lights. Right. And right. The next thing you right, know. Right. Right. Wait. Right. And, and then wait a minute. You wake up. And wait, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. That's not who I went out with. Like, look, look, look wait a minute. Gone. Baby. Gone. Disappeared. You know look, I mean, y'all can get a host of different things to, you know, like enhance your beauty. But, you know, this is what I got. The gym. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, look, I got some, I got some butter. I can write some some butter skin cream. I got some look. I got some. Nah, and you know what else y'all got? Your beard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shout out to Scott's Porter, who was our <laughs> wonderful sponsor. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, shout out to them because, as I said, this is this is a Scott's Porter beard. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. But there are many. I mean, but that's grow. it. I mean, that's that's all. I, I can shape it. I can let it grow. But, I, I look. But, but do be beard fishing out here. I just want you to know. The minute it starts yeah. to get out beyond an inch, I have questions and concerns. I want to know what you look like in high school. I want to see your college picture. You play as good. I want to see when you came off. Line. Like, I need to see some evidence that there's some consistency in your look. And it's not just your nose to to, to forehead that I'm looking yeah. at. So the beard look, look, is like a good week. What's, what's the dude's name? Uh, J look, ha have you seen James Harden <laughs> without yes. his beard? Yeah. yeah. Never. <laughs> yes. I'm like, hey. I'd, well, I'd be creeping past like, don't say nothing to me. Okay, don't look at me. Yo, I, mean, I tell everybody, I tell everybody, there are two watershed moments in my life, right? Going bald. Yeah. And growing the beard, right? Interestingly, the, and the beard was, the beard was a, a moment in my life where I was like, I just don't give a damn. Like, it, the beard was a breakup beard. Like, I don't, don't oh. care. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to holler at nobody. I'm done. Like, I don't you care how I You're like, focus on yeah, me. I did, yeah, I, I was like, I'm, and, look, and it was painful. Like literally, it was painful. And revolution is we're gonna get back to her five things. We we coming back. I just right. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure. Um, but yeah, it was painful. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm on these streets, and all of a sudden, right? Yo, People I like, like your beard. Oh, amazing, yo, your beard is sexy. Yo, like yeah. wait, hey, hey. yeah. Like, you like, hey, I was gonna cut this off, but <laughs> six years later, it's still it's still around. It's a look. It's a look. It's a look. It's I a, have to say, it's a look. It's a look. It's a look. I Thank you. Who have beards, and particularly if they're if you're a salt and pepper. It just is a swaggy look to me. Um, it looks like you've lived and you've experienced some things. And it also looks like you care about those things. And so I think oh, yeah. to the point, so I was talking about wellness, like, mm -hmm. I don't think, I wonder, particularly for Black men, if you know how much your health impacts all of the other things that we're looking right. at. Mm hmm Right. And I was talking to my brother recently and I said to him, you know, for most of the Black men I know, y'all health is like people who freebase, off the cliff. <laughs> One day you're healthy. Next day, Geronimo! And you're just off into the abyss. Right. And so, because of that, like, what are you doing to mitigate making sure that you are extending your life expectancy? If you're thinking yeah. about legacy, if you're still thinking about having children, if you want to have this next lap 
be one with someone who's really excited to be with you for you. Are you excited to be with you for you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Drop the pearl. Right. It, it, exactly. I, I love that. To be excited to be with you. And that is that is a wonderful thing to think about. Like, because I, as, as you're talking, I'm thinking about maybe the people that I, I, I hang out will self-select around taking care of themselves, at least at mm -hmm. least from a physical self. And I want to say that the men that I hang out with, I'm, 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 I'm you know, uh, consciously thinking about my, my people, right? And they are people who are thinking about themselves from a wellness perspective and, and uh, it, it, at least at least from an emotional intelligence perspective as well, because we ha we're having these conversations. But maybe that's a self-selection. It is. You know, that the people that I'm surrounding myself are the people that I want to surround myself because they're doing that work. They're showing me, you know, what their works look, work, what their work looks like. And I'm showing them what my work looks like. And so, um, but it is, it is interesting because, you know, I'm not into smoking cigars, you know, I'm into playing pickleball at 5 a.m. in the morning. You know, that's, 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 that there's a self-selection there. I, I'm thinking about my well-being as potentially, do I want to be a dad at some point? But, you know, the, you know, I'm getting a little long. I, I know, right? I, I, this exactly. is a change. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> Y'all, that wait. means that means the good doctor about to find him a young one, child. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You know, this, that's Come a whole thirty five year olds. Yeah, look, 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 that's a, I'm, I'm gonna have to shave my beard for these thirty five year olds because Listen, like, I already told you last time about these Benjamin Button eggs. Although my doctor did say <laughs> that I am quite fertile, and I was like, the devil is a liar. Can you imagine <laughs> me with a with an eighteen year old going who is in somebody's institution that I have to pay tuition for and a baby? I just feel like that'd be a practical joke. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. But we're, we're, we're moving back. So there's that, 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 that emotional and, and, and fitness piece. But I love that you say yeah. that, that, you know, as, as you're attracting folks to you and, 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 and people see you, you know, yeah. and, and I wonder sometimes, you know, as, as people look at, who their potential mates are? How are they? How are they doing the mental checklist? You know, as I as I think about this, I, as I embark on this next, you know, I, I'm closing this revolution of of, of age, and yeah. and what is this? It's April the sixth. So in what you know, that's twenty four. That's in forty four days, this cycle ends, and then the next revolution begins from an age perspective, and what is it you know like i i still want to be in shape i still want to be able to play i still i still want to be able to go and do and have nothing slow me down yeah. and yeah because I, I i still think at this age i'm not invincible like i was in my 30s and early 40s but i still want to make sure that i can be invincible if i need to be that's right you need to get that little rev up the nitro pack is what you need to be able to you're still preparing for that you know from the you know from the fast and the furious and the people with the yeah. nitro in the yeah cargo. i got you yeah that, that's right that. yeah. there's that's drugs it. for that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me clutch my pearls because what mm, listen i'm here for all the druggery that gets you to the things you need to do okay uh, look i'm here for the elongation of the situation um so yeah <laughs> uh, no pun no, no pun intended. Intended. But like, so, seriously, like, go ahead. No, 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 no. You go ahead. I was just thinking, I, I want to make sure that we get through the, the physical, the emotional. Spiritual. Yeah, the spiritual. So talk about that. Like, to talk about so, that. Because sometimes there can be some in, incongruencies. And how do you work through particularly? that? Because that's a, that can be a deal breaker between folks. Absolutely. That's a value sticking point to me. Mm -hmm. So one of the things when I realized I was out of integrity with myself is that mm -hmm. I am a believer. And I want to be with someone who will pray over me. And they might believe in Allah, they might believe in Jehovah, they might believe in God, they might, the universe a little bit confuses me. But because I'm like, ain't it, we just, you just unnaming the name. That's like when Prince became a symbol. Like I just, I want somebody who's going to cover me, right? And who I know is, has a center of gravity that is not himself. Right. You know, and has a higher power that he talks to listens to that governs his life mm -hmm. and i'm notice i'm not even talking about scripture right like right, it's just a matter right. of like the, where does your source come from and can you tap into that source 
And are you clear about what that source is? Can you articulate it? Because for example, if you ask a lot of women who say they are spiritual, what that means, we can run you down exactly what that means to us. Every time I ask a man who says he's spiritual, what does that mean? It'd be like, I better have a jibbish got a bird or a friend. Like there's no definition. There's no clarity. So to me that, are you just saying that you don't believe, but you know that you, you know that most of, of us are like, you better believe in something. <laughs> That that is an interesting thing. Um, I that's an interesting thing. You know, the, the the good doctor in me is like, okay, well, let's go do the research because if you ask me about my, like, spiritual but not religious, mm -hmm. you know, I have a center. Like, I pray and meditate every day. I pray. You know, what is what what does the gratitude look like? What does my yep. meditation towards uh, my my center look like? That's right. Um, I am also. You know, as I think that we talked about it before, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm the child, I'm, I, I'm a child of drug addiction. And I say this because I was drugged to Sunday school. I was drugged to uh, m Monday, Thursday service. I was drugged to choir practice. I was so <laughs> right. So Christianity was, was, was placed on me. Yeah. And I think that not even, I think, as I say this in my spiritual walk and journey for me, my spirituality has to be mine. It has not, it, it has to be, it, it has to be mine and no one else. It is uninfluenced by any mercenary, you know, mercenary mm -hmm. motive in mm -hmm. the sense that it has to be mine. And I think that I have rebelled against anything that is orthodox in mm -hmm. a manner because I don't want my center, my spiritual center to be anything, but it's something that I've created in myself. Yep. So I think many, many men and many men, this is a hypothesis who may have found themselves or find themselves in situations like mine where where Christianity or something was forced upon them and their walk wasn't theirs, they are still journeying to find what this looks like. And I knew and I and don't get me wrong, Kish, I shied away. I mean I, I moved totally away from any spirituality and religion for a long time because I was like, this is not me. And and then it was continually like, well, if you don't do this, there's something wrong with you. Well, I'm a rebel. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so if you tell me that I can't do something or what I'm doing you, is wrong. You're going to be like, yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Nah, bro. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, nah, bro. That, this is mine. I don't make it mine. But as I've gotten older, I've also known that for my grounding and for my, my walk, and like you said, to be able to show up for someone else, I have to have something that grounds me. That's right. Yeah, let me ask you this question. What happens when you meet someone who is really grounded in their faith around a specific dogma? But and and answer and, and answer this in, in the context of Kish, but yeah. a brother also says, I am spiritual and I am I am I have my own walk, but it's it may not it may not be look like yours. How does that come together or does it work at all? I think it works just fine. I think that what I'm, what I would look for, and what I think many women would quietly admit, because you know, if you like, especially if you like Christian and stuff, you man gotta look a certain way. But in our in our group chats, we're a little bit more relaxed. Um, and so what I what you spoke about is clarity in your belief mm -hmm. and clarity and center. And so what keeps me unsettled is if there is no clarity. So you can't be mumbling and fumbling through how you get through the day in the world. Like that's right. just not it for me. And because if you subscribe to a particular dogma, it's a mix of whichever scripture or biblical base you believe in, plus tradition. So I grew up in a really conservative Christian um, denomination. And from early on, I would be like, that doesn't feel like it's in the Bible. That feels like it's a tradition. Like we have decided right. to do mm -hmm. this set of things to set us apart. Why can't we just say that? Like you like it red and you like it green and you wear all white. The end. Like it. We don't have to find the one sentence. So like you, as a kid, all my friends were getting baptized when they were nine. And I was like, we don't even know how to wash right. How do we know Jesus? <laughs> like, I just was like, I, I can't. I, I didn't get baptized until I was 21. I was out of college. And so, you know, I appreciate when there is clarity of center, when we can have healthy discussion. Because ultimately what you're saying is I approach every morning with gratitude and prayer. Yes. If, you, if I wake up and you over there in your prayer corner do what you got to do, that, that is respect. Right. If there's right. more that you want me to do as a part of that, in that deference perspective, I will do it. Right. Because I understand that it's not about the thing. It's about how we do that thing. And so what's healthy to me is if I don't have any protest, because I don't care one way or another, and you care very deeply about a thing, it's easy for me to align with what you want to do, because I actually didn't have a dog in the fight. 
Now, if mm-hmm. I have one and we're different, we need to figure out real quick what's that center. And there's some of us who don't admit early enough that we're just not aligned. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. And, that and okay. I think that is that is a part of, you know, I was I was listening to Jay Shetty and he, he, he's got a little mini podcast uh, episode that he talks about like compatibility. Mm-hmm. And one of those things is, 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 is finding whether or not you can like each other a lot. Right. You can, you know, I like, I like spending time with you. I like, you know, hanging out, we have fun, but is there compatibility? That's that, right. Cause the compatible, the compatibility is what builds the roots of a long-term relationship. Correct. Right. right. Can, can, like you said, can we find a space where you're over and let's just say, you know, I'm Muslim and you're Christian, but you know, can we find a space where we can at least have conversation about how our faith impacts our individual lives and That's how right. our faith then in impacts our our communal lives together. Right. And I, I love that you said that when we have this opportunity to, to to mutually respect each other. I think what happens when discord happens is when there's not a mutual respect. Respect. Uh-huh. Or there's a forcing on you gotta be this way because well, that's to be with me, that's, you gotta be you this gotta way. You gotta be that. And that right. doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And one of the things that I'm coming to, um, there's a book that I was reading called um, For Women Only. And it talks about what, um, you know, thousands of interviews, but it talks about like what men kind of like really want um, to, for overall happiness, satisfaction and content in their lives. And honestly, the thing that was most surprising, but also a dumb moment to me was respect. Yeah. Like, Brother was like, oh, I could be devoid of love, but can you can you make sure you respect me though? Like that is the love for me. And I realized like, yo, I struggle with respect. Okay, let me pause and step back. What what needs to be true for me to have respect mm. for that person? And it, I came around to that brother has to respect himself. Right. And so that's a values thing immediately. Mm-hmm. It's objective, right? But it's also a value thing. Like immediately I can be like, okay, this is how he governs himself at work. This is how he governs himself at home. This is how he governs himself when it comes to his friends and family. This is how he governs himself. And you should be an observation of those things. And it's funny because today I brought my journal. Look, my dating detox. <laughs> I told y'all I had a dating detox yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. I did. So yeah. this is the journal I brought. Talk about that. And I talked, I looked through the things that I was saying and observing as I was engaging with folks because I wasn't dating at all, but it doesn't mean my inbox was empty, right? Or my, or my phone wasn't empty and I had to have. Slide into my DM. Being ashy. I'm not sure if the accomplished brothers is really sliding in DMs these days. I don't know how the, how the brothers of the world who are about substance, how do they get to the, to the people? Do they have to they call just, my people? They just post pictures on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. I get likes, cares, likes, fire. But but That's seriously right. though, like if you think about the when I talk about the five things of wellness, like look how those things are going together, yes. right? Yes. Like, yes. All I'm talking about is everywhere you go, there you are. And so if you have been having uh, an experience over and over and over again, God is telling you, like, I'm going to keep giving you a love tap to you for mm. this lesson right. Right. So right. You, keep, you keep dating the same type of broads. Stop being salty. Like, maybe you need to put a little, you know, you put a little celery in the soup if it's too salty. Something, you know, that, something. That you got to switch it up. Yeah, switch it up. You got to switch it up. You got to switch it up. And not, not me up, yourself right. up. Right. Yes, yes, yes. All, all, all of this. And... I, I, I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, I'm putting a pin in that for one second because I want to touch on this respect thing for a second. Yeah. And it's interesting because brothers, I, I want you to, you know, listen to this is that when you respect yourself, you're going, there are going to be tests and people around you will test you and they, and, and they will know whether or not you respect yourself. And I remember right. having a conversation uh, with a person in my life and we were talking about a subject. I can't talk about the subject on here because it was- I would like y'all to know it's a woman because if it was a man, he'd have said, my friend so-and-so. Look, look, <laughs> man, we always know when you're talking about a broad, okay? <laughs> and a person in my life sound like there's elevation and prioritization, but we're going to leave that alone for another podcast. Be, oh, hello? <laughs> See, I cannot with you. Um, so we were having a conversation about physiological aspects of the body. Okay? <laughs> yes, I am. I- 
yes, I am not. I'm not providing is the necessary color. But <laughs> we were talking about aspects of, of physiological behaviors of the body. OK. Yeah. And uh, this person in my life was like, because um, I, I, I actually made the statement of, well, the, the theory is, is that most people can do this. And this person came, well, this this person is is a is a expert in the field. And I tend to I, I think I would believe her more. And it was like in this moment, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So in that moment, I was like, I either have this opportunity to let that slide or say, let's let's unpack what you just said. Correct. Because, right. Let's because there's a, that. There, there's a Ph.D. on the phone. Right. And so you just discounted anything that I just said. I, I, right. I, I didn't say it was fact. I said theory. And I said, well, let, let's unpack that because right now I'm feeling, and again, it's the story that I'm saying to myself is that you don't respect the statement that I just said, or you don't, right. right, all of a sudden. So we had to unpack that for a second. And I think the point that I'm trying to make is that there will be times when we have to show the world like, oh, I'm going to respect myself because you just, I just perceived that you disrespected me. Yeah, that's Maybe you did, but the impact of that. That's right. And so I got to show up for myself in the that's conversation right. and sometimes i can be a little i can be a dick because i was like oh wait um it is. <laughs> yeah what you mean by i i would i i she's a expert in the field so i would tend to so are you saying that at no point i might have done any kind of research on the subject matter right to be able to make the statement or that maybe i've had the experience a number of times and then gone and done the homework to figure out how does this no. happen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I can, I, I may be able to talk intellectually about this subject. Yeah. So yes, like I, I think that we have to make sure that we're respecting ourselves because we are tested. Um, but I also think what you're saying is that to respect ourselves, is that we have to take care of our emotional wellness. We have to take care of our physical wellness because like you're saying, we're still, out here and people will say he takes care of he respects himself right because if he respects so himself from the emotional and physical emotional, and the physical spiritual and the spiritual right he can he can show up for me correct and that's what yeah. it is focus on me right let's be clear about that because i <laughs> focus on me so then if you're doing those things let's talk about money because that's the thing that we get real yeah. skittish about particularly between mm -hmm. black men and women it, that, that's your flavor and so my stepfather said but god bless his soul said to me when i was in my early 20s broke um, the only men who complain about money are broke men. Mm. What he meant by that was like a man with money not fussing with you over the twenty dollars or the hundred dollars or whatever that you want. Like that's not an issue. Now it's up to you to have some self management to not take advantage of that, right? So that's right. a discernment right. thing mm -hmm. to talk about. But uh, I've noticed that like men who have not achieved a certain level of financial security for themselves whatever whether it's perceived or real whether it's a rung that they want to cap, you know grab because of society their friends their expectation whatever it has not been achieved they are unsettled yes and yeah, when they are unsettled that. then we are unsettled mm -hmm. i would agree i would i would definitely agree with that yes yes and that doesn't absolve me as an independent grown up the responsibility of making sure that i have short footing but if i am looking at a heteronormative relationship, then I actually am standing on shore footing to stand to your shore footing. Mm. So I'm not looking to jump from pond pod to pond pod. <laughs> so to it, me, that's it, one of the things that I think about. Right. And so it, I, I like how you couch that in a sense of how we perceive our own financial wellness. Yep. Because there's some people out there who's like, I don't, I don't need to be a, a millionaire to have financial wellness, right? Correct. I can make six figures. I can make five, high five, whatever it is that allow, you know, allows me to show up in the world like I want to show up in the world. We also, right. you know, look, we also know like you can be making fifty, sixty thousand dollars and have little experiences, little expenses, and be out here in the world just doing your thing and happy mm -hmm. and content, mm -hmm. right? And and so I think that's that's a wonderful thing that you said because I think. The expectation is, and we hear that from some women, that you got to be making six figures or you got to be making six figures, you know, to date me. Well, you know, in my case, well, we're not, if, if that's that expectation, you're not my person, you right. know, right? And I'm not we're growing and building together. 
Okay, but hold that right there. I'm not going to hold you on that one. Because although I'm not focused on your... I I don't think I've ever said something like, you need to have six figures or whatever, because money is a tool. Um, But but at this big age, let me tell you what I do not want to do. uh, Gut a house. (laughs) So if the foundation... I'm trying to put up curtains, maybe a (laughs) sheetrock wall or two, and some good furniture. I am not interested in this gut rehab. When I was in my 20s, I was happy to build it from scratch. Oh, look at this old house. It has such good bones. And we're going to take our time room by room. And every summer, we're going to build our life together. I'm not doing that now. That's exhausting. Just like my friends who are having babies in their 40s. They're tired. So they have badass kids. We've talked about this. It's the thing. (laughs) We're building a life. I'm not doing broke parenting in my 40s. I did it in my 20s. So I don't want to do broke relationship stuff. And what I mean by that is... The set of experiences that I have been able to create while I wait for myself and for my child, who is a grown person. So I am already providing for two adult humans. <laughs> my expectation, and I do not think that this is unrealistic, is that the gentleman who has been moving in his life and building his foundation, if he wants someone like me first, should have observed me mm. to see, is it surface stuff or is that really how she shows up? Right, And then am I in a place where I can step in and add to that? I ain't say replace it, but I'm not doing 50, 50. You made me pay for my check. We are friends. Okay. You will never <laughs> get inside of this box. You hear me? Never. Um, so when I think of like how women are framing things, it's jacked. It is. We've gotten real stuck because many of us have been building our own foundations while we wait. And I don't think we say we we acknowledge that enough. And I'm not sure men understand and acknowledge that enough is that sis has multiple degrees, not just because she's smart and wants to, but because she is waiting. What are we supposed to do when we wait? Just be idle? No, I guess I'm gonna get this next degree. All right, look, here's the thing. I understand all of that. And, <laughs> like, yeah, and so, the, so so the, so the men in my ear are like, okay, all right, I understand. Like, I like I understand. Like, if you gotta pay for if you gotta pay for your check, we're friends. For us. Like we we out here building and we out here, we're all armoring up. There's got to be some, and I hate to say this, some sort of resource exchange, right? Of course. So th- that's what I'm saying. Like, cool, I- I'm picking up the check. But look, if I'm coming home, if I'm coming home, like there's, like, I'm, it, 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 it may it. not be, look, and the resource may not be j- sex. It may be something, how are you providing for my Am life? Am I redoing your well? LinkedIn profile? Because let me tell you what, <laughs> I charge more than that, the dinner. For that service, I just want you to know. Like you said, if you're at, if if you want me to add to your life, there is also Correct. an expectation that we figure out how the additions to my life come from you. As oh, well. absolutely. Yeah, and so I mean, that's make no the mistake. Thing. I'm being facetious, but make no mistake. Right. My one of the things that I'm really skilled at, and sometimes I have to guard myself in personal relationships because I end up bringing my work home, mm-hmm. is that I'm in the business of relationships with people at work, and so I think we talked last time about the five love languages. I have transformed teams and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial pairs in business because of my understanding of how that stuff works. And so when I step into even just like casual relationship, I'm immediately watching, looking, learning, because I want every experience you have with me to be a dope experience. I'm not worried about other women. I'm not in competition with nobody but myself. But every time you walk with me, it is just me. And yeah. so I'm my job. And my responsibility and my pleasure is to get to know who you are and what fuels you. So when I see when men say like I'm real simple, I'm listening for what that means. And then how does that how does that simplicity show up? And so for some guys, I was dating somebody recently, real simple, laid back guy. I was like in my head, I'm gonna introduce everyday luxury to him because he doesn't understand about elevated everyday lotion. Everyday luxury. Everyday please, luxury. Please, the small please, things yeah, please in your unpack life. that. I want to know what everyday so the, luxury is. The small I'm things in your life. I'm going I'm to reach for a couple things, y'all. Hold on. The small things in your life. The scented candles that are in your office. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, the humidifier. You can't see it over here. The mystifier that's in my thing, the lotion that you use, you use Scotch Porter for your beard as opposed to, you know, whatever baby oil. You take your <laughs> you take your routine up to ritual. Right. When you start to add a little bit of element of, I, my daughter calls it fancy, to how you live your life. Yeah. So maybe you yeah. don't get the Hanes t-shirts, even though you've loved them since you were six. Maybe you elevate to cause because the cotton is smoother. It's still a white shirt, right? But it, it's still simple. 
but it's swaggy. It's an indication of the fact that you have elevated in your life. And so everyday luxuries are just the small things that you do for yourself that just give you the sense of pouring into yourself a little bit differently. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I totally, I think that as we, as, as, as people who are trying to be in a relationship with each other, yep. as you get to know each other, you figure out like, how can I, how can I best show up? Mm -hmm. Like for me, uh, understanding, um, Sometimes showing up for me is how you communicate with me or how you don't communicate with me. And, and yep. I'll go to the, I'll go to the latter aspect because I am an introvert at, at, so, at, at a certain point in time, communication with me will become difficult. And I, I try to communicate that because I am an introvert. So at some, at some point in time, I literally just want you to stop talking to me because it, it, it literally becomes like knives to my brain, to my body. You're like, I'm out of words. I said I am out of words. I, I am out like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and so I, I think in an understanding of that, you know, it, it's funny because my good friend Amber, I, we, we have this, this funny saying, like, you can be in the house. You can have your leg on. You can have your hands on me. Like, we can be, just but don't just say, just don't <laughs> say anything. And look, and look, look, and if you got to say something, like, ask me one question. If there's a three successive questions, ask them two minutes apart. <laughs> saying, this is why I'm single. This is why I'm a Chris single dollar. <laughs> you know yeah, crispy, right? a Chris, 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 like brand new minted, <laughs> minted. But that's that's just a part of my introversion. You know, I, I yeah. yeah. Once I get there, but I think there's an understanding, and also me understanding that there's a responsibility to communicate. Like, okay, what's the what's the safe word to know? Correct. Okay, well, I'm in. That right, is a good I'm word. My, right, I'm in my introversion. But also, what do you need? What, how can I still support you even though that I'm in my introversion? Because I need you to support me. And sometimes, like, like I said, it's just laying next to me or just like, like we're just here together. Yep. And, and I'm, I'm an introvert. That. And people don't believe that because I'm so bubbly. I like people, but like I tonight after, oh, I'm getting a tattoo today. But after that, like my, my joy this week, and I've turned down two dates already this weekend because my plan is to simply be in my bed, showered and freshly made up bed, y'all, because I don't play that game. I'm still a Jamaican woman. Um, but I'm planning to read and I want to write. I have to plan out content for next week. What you mean? What you gonna say? It's spicy. I'm just over here. smelling. I'm just. <laughs> it's, real, it's real delicious over here. I want you to know all the lady in the store today was like, "Ooh, all who's the time. you?" All the time. I'm in multi-layered oils. Okay, listen, we're not gonna talk about a different episode, different episode. Yeah. Now you gotta come on my show so we can talk about that. Okay, but the yes. reality of the situation is that when I think about how I engage as an introvert. I'm like you. So my, my code word is I've run out of words. Like I have dead, literally textbooks, like I'm out of words. I literally talk from 8.30 every day to almost nine o'clock yes. at night, every yeah. day. Okay, between client work, my staff, da, 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 da. I don't want to say nothing to you. Yeah. And so I'm down to do activities, but can they be silent? Like, let's go shoot and not sit across and have dinner. Let's go bowl. And you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm happy to be yeah. out, but like, can we not talk though? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, 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 and and I'm not speaking for every man, but if I yeah. see that, like there's an understanding, then I'm more apt to then, I, I'm more apt to shower you with love and affection and that, you know, we both Absolutely. are feeling, fulfilling e each other's needs. Like, hey, like, one, one of the things, it's interesting, one of the things that, because I'm independent, I'm an only child, you know, all the things, when I'm, I'm about to one. leave, huh? I'm raising one. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm about to, I, I, when I'm about to leave for a trip and you start, and there's a, a barrage of questions that, yeah, no, if you want to do something for me, just do it. That's right. Put the, yeah. Put the pistachio, you know, I love pistachio. Put the pistachio, just go ahead and put them in my bag. Right. Asking, a, asking me, do you I want, want the pistachio? No. Right. No, just put the pistachios in my bag because when I get to my bag and they're there, I'm going to be like, oh, sh damn, that was sweet. Mm -hmm. You know? Just but to, that's just all to... about watching. So when we talk about like yes, healthy relationships, and how me men... communicating that as well. Correct, right? And but also like as a man, like just because you don't need a thing doesn't mean that the person you're with doesn't need a thing. And there yeah. is something about being with a man, even when y'all at the casual stage. So I think that a lot of times dudes are like, "Oh, when we serious, how do you get to serious?" You think I'm just gonna be like, you know what, this this private label brand stuff is real good because I already know that the luck stuff is gonna be on the other side. 
And so how you behave casually, recognizing that we talked about before the little things that I like, the little things I like to do, and those things just appearing, that's not being a simp. That is being plugged in. Yeah. Because your job, before you start to pull out your plug, the plug in is to observe, (laughs) is this the kind of person that I can see myself around? Have I observed her in more than one? So you're you're investing, right? Money's a tool. You're investing your time and your financial resources for that observation, which is why you got to make sure that you're in a place and in a lane that you can afford, which brings me to the last thing. Yeah. What is happening in the community you surround yourself with? So at the beginning, you yeah. talked about the fact that the people in your corner, look, people's doing push-ups and bike races. Y'all oh, run. Yeah. You do the oh, things. Yeah. You pick the ball. Like, the stuff the is thing. happening. Look, you saw the bros at the clave? I did. I yeah. told you I'm never coming back. <laughs> you, saw, you, saw, already. you saw us riding. You saw, you I saw this. this I said, I'm this never coming pel- back to that. You saw this peloton of, of fit right. black men so riding, it's sort of like, riding through Charlotte. You want to go to the clave? I do not. I went one time and the testosterone <laughs> overload nearly did me under. Like I can't, mm. ever, I'm nope, mm-mm, from a distance, from a distance. One of y'all was trying to get me though, but that's okay. Um, I'm like, just one. And so, just one, just just one. one. Just, he's trying to move mm. to the top. He knows. Go to Kishana's <laughs> Facebook page. It is, it is, it actually is aptly named Thirst Trap by Kishana Palmer, but <laughs> Shut up. we won't say anything. Ain't that naked picture up there either. It's just me <laughs> with a good church shoulder every time. A little leg, a little ankle. (laughs) That's it. So the community that you're around is so important as a man in how you date. Because if the brothers around you are not encouraging you to show up powerfully in your own life, both by example and by holding you accountable, if they're encouraging your shenanigans, right? If they're not asking you to move into a new season because they're in it and they're moving, et cetera, then that's going to impact how you date. Because if you're a good dude and you like the door opening, handling dinner, bit, 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 and your and your crew is like, ah, oh, these broads who are grown with degrees and houses and children, so clearly we had the money. Um, out here they want all the stuff I got. Is it the no? We do not. Um, then you're gonna have a different experience, and you're gonna give a level, different level of energy than if you're around men who are like, yo, we was fighting and bopping in these streets for we was for the community, and now. We want to be able to lock in a little differently. What does that look like? That's a different yeah. kind of support. And I'm in a community of women. I actually um, thought about it today. I'm in a community of women called the Real Love Network, where our leader, she just came out with a book, The Wants of Women, where Dr. Kaz, oh, her whole Dr. point. Dr. Kaz. Is, and, my, and, and that's her, my boo. And, right. Has she been on the show? No, no, no. I've been trying to get her husband on the show. Oh, I love him. Let me text her. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> so she wrote a book recently, but I'm in her actual like relationship group. And I have been for two years. And right. it's not about finding a boo, although that has happened to many people. Yeah, it's, it's about self awareness. Yeah, here. as a professional woman, how do you mm-hmm. show up powerfully for yourself so that you can make space for love? Yeah, and I think if I had to think about to to offer to a a guy friend how to date better, my question would be: Are you in a position where you feel vulnerable enough that you can get your heart broken? Because if you're not in a place to potentially get your heart broken, then how do you actually show up for love? Easy, real easy, Kashana. Like tell me. It, real, real you easy. Got, That's how you do it. Formula, we can sell it on QV on QVC, you know. <laughs> yeah. You'll yeah, be great yeah. co-host. You that's, know that? Oh that's my god. Really, real easy. If you're not if you're not ready, vulnerable, I mean, yeah, you could still be you can still be loved and give love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know, right. So that community that you surround yourself yeah. with in terms of your wellness to me is very important because let's yeah. face it, like whoever's in your ear. And whatever y'all are sending each other in the group chat, I know the bros chat is live, live. But it is. I'm sure. I do not want to ever see it. I'm sure. But I. But how much of that is about accountability and about uplift yeah. and about making sure that like y'all are really on the path that's that's designed for you for for purpose, and that bleeds into how you date. Like you're not gonna just be a stand up dude over here and a total whore over here for the, your whole life, are you? That that feels really incongruent. <laughs> like, it's, the, does the road not come back together? Oh, you said the it road should. does not come together. It should. No, 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 no. Look, here's the thing, and 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 my revolutionaries will be like, here it comes because they know exactly <laughs> what I'm gonna say. Right? I say it so much. Is that the path to self actualization? Le- it stems from finding and securing, at least in my my opinion. A singular love where you can pour your time and effort into a singular person and they're pouring their time and effort in back into you 
and then there are less distractions, right? Less distractions, because when you're distracted, we both know that you can't fulfill your dreams and goals and path and yeah. purpose in life because you're putting all of that into all of that in, in, into the thirst traps, right? Because you want all of the attention and you're giving the attention away. But when you're focused in on your family and the person who all of the things that you said that are supporting you, that you have been, you know, that you have if, have grown and done the personal work that you need to show up for you yourself and your partner, then you can go out in the world and be the best cardiologist in the world. You can That's go right. out in the world, right? You can go out in the world and be a, a VC. You can be the best athlete. You can be whatever you want. You can be at the top of your field. That's right. Because one, like you said, you can be vulnerable at home. You can be safe. You know, you have a, a strength and a partner because, and, and, and hopefully less chaos because it relate relationships right. are not without chaos. Correct. They're not, they are not without chaos. They are not without strife. There's also comes with the work and that you've done the foundational work, hopefully right. that will allow you to move through strife and chaos when it, when it does That's arise. Right. Um, but like I said, the self actualization piece is, is important for you to be revolutionary, not only for yourselves, but for the, the people that you're actually trying to serve. That's right. My boys that I really, really rely on around that are in singular relationships, right? Are singularly focused and they're at the top of their fields. And I think the hypothesis is, is because of that. They do not allow distractions. They do not yeah. have 10 people on their text chains yeah. as they're going out throughout the day because they need different stimuli to keep them moving in the day, you know, or you need that affirmation because I got 10 women on the text chain or 10 That's whatever. Right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's that you're right. looking for. You know what I'm saying? And and so moving to that space and getting to that space, particularly as we get older, particularly as we get older, I think becomes harder because we bring so much of our stuff. Yes. I had, you know, at the recording of this show, you know, I've been with my therapist for nine years, you wow. know, and we, and we laugh about it. We laugh about it now because like you think you spend like this person knows me better than anyone else. Yes. Al's at home is my guy. Nine. Huh? My massage therapist say? knows me. He knows my body better than any man in the world. I've been with him for 10 years. This little five foot four man, I love Gilberto so bad. He does, though. I would have to bring a, a, a partner around and be like, just spend an hour with Gilberto so he can help you understand how to yeah, understand. Yeah, me. yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I definitely agree. But good idea. nine years ago, the person that I was nine years ago, oh my the person gosh. I am now, is completely different. Completely different. Completely different. Right. Nine I years mean, there's, ago, still, I was, there's still remnants. Well, there's still remnants that I'm trying to expel. That, that you know. Yeah. But that's the part of the work, and I think having the community that you can talk through, and I think these, you know, these five things that you've talked to, the community is 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 one of the biggest aspects because we say on this show, you got to find your midwives. You got to you find those people to help you help you fulfill your revolution. That if your revolution is to be single in a relationship, to show up for yourself, to show up for the people, you can't do it alone. Yep. You cannot, you can't. You absolutely no. cannot. And, and so here's the thing, you know, one of the things that I used to like really kind of like jerk back at is I want somebody to build with. We already talked about that, but, 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 but our wounds are designed to create, create life. And oftentimes I think we focus singularly on giving birth to humans, but really, if you look at any successful man, whether he is a, a straight man, hetero, queer, whatever, don't matter. There's a woman or two or three. Because we're actually designed to create, which is why we can yeah. turn a house into a home, which is why we take your idea and ten exit. So you have a responsibility as a man to yourself, if yeah. you want to be successful, to put yourself in position for the kind of woman who can ten x you. You're right. And right. to give her the space. Or whoever, the, you, or whoever you choose or to Whoever take. you choose to. Right. Right. To ten x you. But that's, a, I, but that's one of the things that for me has made dating such a pleasure because I have a lot of friends who are like, yo, I hate it. It's whack. This is a whack out here. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going I'm to rub all of that language on my mind, take a break, figure out what I need. And I wrote it down. Um, what, what do I need to feel like in a relationship that is a, a healthy, loving relationship? Yeah. And then I'm going to pull it out as I date men. And the guy that I ended it with um, yesterday, um, I realized I was out of integrity with myself. Mm, I like because that term, out of integrity. Yeah, I was out of integrity. I made a commitment to myself. I do not want to date a man who has health challenges that he is not handling. 
I don't want to be a night nurse. I watch my mother do that with my stepfather for, for half their marriage. I'm not interested in that life. Like, that's not what I want to do. I've been a single mother my whole life. That's not what I want to do. Now, God forbid something happens, I'm on the job. Trust me, I got good right. home training. Now. Right. But I'm not inviting that in. Like, you're not taking care of it? Back to my yes. cliff example. You know, we talked about this. <laughs> so I started Drama. dating this brother who was, what, was addressing some health challenges he was having. And I'm sitting, call the doctor, do this. You should do that. You should do that. What do I sound like? In his ear. I realized that my text exchanges started to sound curt. And like I was talking to a child. That I was a little bit mean in my comebacks to things. When I would get on the phone, I'd be like, ew. Like real quick. So somebody I'm, I'm actually really attracted to. We got to pause right there. I have too much respect for you to drag you down a hole, uh, down a lane that you don't want to go down. Because you were fine with the way you showed up in the world. You were fine not making those phone calls. You were fine hoping and praying it'll get better. And there's going to be somebody else who's going to want to walk that walk with you. I know for myself, that is not the walk I want to walk. Yeah. So we're going to stop right there. I right? Before it. I become I, disrespectful because that, that's yeah, so important. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about what, what, what's the blog in my mind when I write now, and then when we publish this, this, uh, this episode, yeah, about being, being right as you think about dating and healthy, you know, finding the healthiest version of yourself in a healthy relationship. What does it mean when you find yourself out of integrity? You know what I'm saying? And maybe, maybe that's the revolution is like knowing when you're out of integrity. That's right. And the revolution in itself is to determine what is what is being integrous or having integrity mm -hmm. when you're in a relationship you yep. know what does that mean and then when you're in and then knowing what being out of integrity feels and looks like so you can make good choices for you you That's know right. I, you know I, you know it makes me think about that and all of a sudden now these pictures of being out of integrity come to mind like right. i'm into my health i don't drink a whole lot so dating a person who drinks every night to, out here doing do, do, do right, say right, every Friday right, like that's not right, for you exactly that is that is out of integrity well like, correct if every time we go out you're drinking to get drunk that is out of integrity for me that doesn't work for it me. doesn't work for me and if you participate right. in it then you are yeah. out of integrity with yourself yes. right and that's not judging that person you know what I mean like you get to live your life your life is your choice also for every person who wants to be out Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday at, at our big age. There's other people who are like, so are we getting Chinese today? Or are we going to go out and get sushi? <laughs> like, is it a movie or a show? Are we going to the theater or the bed? Like, what are we doing? Right? So there's no reason. And I have to learn this the hard way. I have been a builder bear okay? And I think I might have said it to you um, offline yes, you or did. before. Like, life with me not going to be easy. So anybody who's excited about this good skin, because I don't have on a stitch of makeup. This is what I look like in the morning Beautiful. when I wake up. You, that's what we want. That's Listen, what we want. Take the take the glasses off. I did it on purpose. Pull, look, pull the locks out. Take the glasses off. Pull the locks out and say hey, hello. Good morning. Hey, it's a whole thing in the morning. That's but, right. That's right. Wake up with a wink. <laughs> Life with me is going to be better, but it is not going to be easier. Right. And there are for there are lives with women who will be easier, even if it's not better. And so you have to decide as a man before you step into a dating experience. Do you want easy or do you want better? Because they may not necessarily be the same. That is true. That is, that is an interesting thing. Mark Manson talks about in his book how to uh, uh, how to not give a, mm -hmm. you know. But he's he said we're always going to have problems. Yeah. But you want to have better problems. Better problems, exactly. Right. You, so and, and thinking about that, and so as you step into a relationship, you step into a marriage. Um, with your partner, whoever it may be, you want to have better problems. And you know what I'm saying? Like you Correct. said, I'm doing this with you. The better problem is like, you know, what does it look like for you to have a drawer in my house? That's a problem, Correct. but right. That, but that's a, that's a better problem. You know I what I'm saying? You to know that my friends tease me so bad because they were like the day Kashana says this man is about to share a drawer, a closet with me. They know I'm, it's a wrap. I'm in love. Cause the thing I'm always <laughs> like, you want to share my closet? I'm like, I just, you know, I'm obsessed with my clothes. I just don't, that, to see how you done derailed me already? Oh my gosh, now I'm thinking about it. That's real love though. I want you to know, like for this one, but, that's a, but, but, but that still goes into it. Like it, life could be better, but it, yeah. it poses a problem, you know, poses a problem for a person who's lived, you know, lived on his own yes. for too long, right? And to bring somebody else into life, into that sphere, it's a, it is, it, it may pose a problem, but life could be better, Yeah, you know? 
Because you yeah. look, look, because clearly, clearly, if I'm giving you a drawer, like the streets ain't calling no more. The streets ain't calling no more. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Calling. First of all, even if I ain't had no drawer, the streets would not be calling. I said I don't see these broads. <laughs> Just don't embarrass you know me in the street. Look, 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 here's my phone, <laughs> Un untethered. First of with, all, with, if, look, 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 here's the code. There you go. Right here. You know if you get in a drawer, here you go. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Here, here's the code. You know what That's I'm saying? That's it. That's so, it. So, I mean, the interesting thing, let me ask this last question because, sure. like, we could go, go on forever because the sure crux is. of kind of this conversation was when you get into this point, all right, I want you to give me, I want you to give people who are dating and particularly men who are dating. Yeah. Like, how do we plan? How do we plan dates? Like we, 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 we got our five strategies to show up, right? Yep. Yep. Now we, you know, we, we're, we're here. We got community, we got finance, we got spirituality, you know, we got emotional wellness and we got physical wellness. We're yep. good. We're ready to go. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah. Right. We see Kishana like, Hey, hey. Kish is, Kish is beautiful. She is a yep. look, progressive all the things like boom, 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 check, check, check mark. You know what I'm saying? She look good yep. when she wake up, you know what I'm saying? Hey. All the things. Right. But I want to, I want to make sure that I I'm dating Kashana. How do I, how do, what tips do you give men is their planning dates? Cause right. you know, like you said, on the last show, dinner and a movie gets old after one. Hello. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hello. So dating is an activity, right? It's a set of activities to decide if you and another person are going to move toward a committed or serious relationship. That's basically the definition of dating. But the key word I want y'all to focus on is activity. It's an activity. It's an activity. It's an activity. The easiest thing to do is to ask me, what are the types of things that I love to do outside of the house? Mm -hmm. For me, it is as follows. Shopping. Hiking. Shopping, <laughs> concerts, <laughs> community service, and then all of the activities the city has to offer. I'm the person that when I had the like Metro Pass for kids, like we did every museum and every activity. I love to be a tourist in a city that I don't live in, including my own. There is too much two for ones happening. You could do that on any budget. So if you have any woman that say, wear some comfortable sneakers, throw on some jeans and we and meet me here, or I'm gonna pick you up to go here and we're gonna go take a class. We're gonna go do a thing. We're gonna go try something. We're gonna be like, well, that was interesting. Like give us an opportunity to experience something together. A lot of right. times I see guys, um, particularly online, write about this experience aspect. I'm about experiences, not things. I like both, just so y'all know, okay? Gucci and outside, just some saying, just saying. Um, you know, the experience is in the building. It's in the, like, um, the muscle memory. I have a folder for every guy I've ever dated who we actually really dated because I take pictures of everything I have since I was a kid. And so I can catalog everything from first date to the first time we did this to that. Like, give us that muscle memory, right? And add to the experiences you want to have. And then show us what makes you you. If you're really into fitness and you're really into biking, can I ride a bike? The answer might be no, I can though. And be like, oh, you can't ride a bike? I'm going to teach you. Boom. First experience. Next thing. And after that, I'm going to get you your own helmet. And then I'm going to take you to go do such and such. And then we're going to okay. go do that. Bring right. me in to the things that make you happy and that excite you and that you're passionate about. Help me to see who you are outside of the stuff. I'm and take in the dark side. <laughs> you know, to say that. <laughs> I, you know the I don't have a card there. <laughs> I'm an angel. I just want you to know. Just the halo that is around my head. I want everybody to know I am an angel. I'm an angel. Um, but no, but in all seriousness, like what yeah, all I'm talking you. about is thought, right? Uh -huh. Use the resources that you have in the city you live in to maximize an experience. And you'll know real early on if you have the type of broad who really ain't for those experiences. Then you get to decide, yeah. do I want that type of shit? That, that's the compatibility thing. There like, you are, go. Are, you, are you open? But I, I, I love that the, the basic question is, is that what are things that you'd like to do outside of the house? And asking Correct. asking each other that question. Correct. I think, and yeah, and, and to be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever asked that question to the woman that I'm seeing. Like, what do you like to do? Ask her today out, and outside. see. Right, exactly. See what exactly. she says. I'm about, and, I, look, I'm about to send a group text. <laughs> right. This is, the question. this is the question. This is the question. Right. And then, like, the thing that I would love to do, somebody take me on a date because I would like to go to improv. Um, I think I'd be really good, but I've only done it by myself, but not with someone. That's an opportunity also to see how I oh, engage. This would, this would be this would this right here would be amazing. Right. 
Like, that's an opportunity to see how I engage with material, how you yeah. engage, how you how you are on your feet. It doesn't just tell you stuff about the date. It tells you about how you respond to yeah. impulse, to how you respond to stimuli that you couldn't plan for. It can mm-hmm. teach you about a person. And at our age, we don't need to be dating for five years to figure out if we're compatible. Bro, we can get no, that no, wrapped no, no, in no. 45 days. I got a 90-day 90, rule. I got a 90-day rule. And look, and I'm really, look, and I'm really looking at 30 days like, yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, look. And and that's like you said at, at at this big age of our lives we don't have time we got time no no and I don't want to waste anybody's time I don't want anybody to waste my time you know, and if I, you I, were gonna I, go ahead no no, no you go ahead I was like if you're gonna I just, date multiple well, women I just love the question that's a good it's question because right? I don't want to be in yeah. the house because y'all are, y'all are looking at me in my office right so I'm in my home office it's very nice in here but this is a very fancy prison because I work from <laughs> home and so what we're not about to do is date in the house I taught my yeah. daughter that there are no dates in the house you y'all young people better get y'all bus passes and be on to the city and walk and talk and hold hands in the village like yeah, and guess what us, us grown people could do that too get outside and get a fresh that is true. That, grab that, the yeah, dog that is and true. go to a dog park and go for a dog run grab a hot dog now do i want to do that on our first date it depends i mean you could be and that's observation right because you could have been like yo i know you had a hard week and we said we're gonna meet up for the first time you know here's a couple things i thought about doing what do you what gets you most excited yeah yeah and i i Thank you for the tips. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, revolutionaries. It, they seem simple to me, but they're, they're. I mean, I say simple, like they're easy questions to ask, but it opens up so much. Yep. And I think for guys, you know, guys, as you're thinking about dating and thinking about who, whoever your partner is, um, asking these questions. And if you're getting, if, if this is the person that you want to date and you're getting something, how do you, how do you, how do you both think about this? Because it's a That's question right. that you also are asking or that they should be asking to you like what do you like like here's the thing i'm into pickleball right now that's my thing right i, that, I that, definitely put a note on my sticky to look up what that is because you know i'm i'm not black american i don't know what none of that stuff is yo yo and i, I look, look look 5 a.m tuesdays and thursdays i'm playing i'm playing pickleball and that's a lot i love it you know i i love it it's a part and i i love fitness i love working out i love getting on the bike and so being able to have a partner that can experience all of that with me. And like, I'm not asking yep. you to run triathlons with me. No, but to be able to, you know, get outside with me to hike. The greatest thing I think, uh, the greatest test for any relationship, any even even new, is to go kayaking together in, <gasps> in, 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 in a tandem kayak, not, not separate kayaks, a tandem, tandem kayak. Yes. Dope. Where you got to figure out how to make, make the kayak go. And you, because you have to figure out how to be in sync and to communicate with each other. Yes. Because you can be, look, you can be fighting each other and the boat's going nowhere. You're going left, right. But once you find a level of trust and syncopation, you can go fast. That's so dope. I hope, I hope yeah. revolutionaries, I hope y'all are paying attention because we done gave you about 39,245 different <laughs> ideas. Okay. Starting with what are the top 10 dates in fill in the blank city to do? Do the corny stuff, corny sells, just like in, Google. Yeah. Right. Just like how in commercials, the corny commercials are the ones we remember the most, corny sells. And I know that we're, we put on this tough veneer. Oh my God, that's so corny. Compliment. <laughs> Keep it going. It is like, right. We might, we have all this, we have, a, we have our own veneer, right. That we, many of us are carrying and, and a lot of scar tissue from yes. hope. And Past. from possibility yeah. and from um, future thinking and planning gone wrong. And I want to be with someone who has the mental toughness to navigate that ahead of me. Yeah. If you think about people who cut machete and cut forest, like, do you have what it takes to cut forest? Because our forest at this point is pretty thick and I don't want you to do it by yourself, but do I have the ability to come behind you and lay seed? Yeah. Ooh. Look at you with these pearls. These pearls of wisdom from from the the Kishana Palmer. Nothing like seven to get you uh, thinking. <laughs> look, revolutionaries, this is why we wanted to bring this queen back to kind of have this conversation. Hopefully you got to see the love and affection that I have for this woman <laughs> uh, and the joy that she brings, not only to me, but to the world and to the people that she works with. Uh-huh. Um, I want to say go to Kishana and Co. Kishanapalmer.com. There we go. There, there we go. KashanaPama.com. Check out the work that she's doing. And if you, your team needs some like building 
she's the person, right? If you just want to hear her speak and you want to bring her to your company, yes, you know, to hear her motivate, you know, motivate and get and you to, to, rele to revolutionize, to scale up, then bring the sister in. You know, I just want to tell you publicly that I love you and that, love you. you know, all, all of the things, this beautiful, beautiful smile that you have <laughs> and the infectiousness and, you know, um, we won't, we won't publish anything that you said about me in the green room. So. We should. It was very funny. And I'd be like, yes. I, listen, mm -hmm. it was all love though, but I will, yeah, I will keep yeah, saying yeah. it. Make sure you cut that out, Tika. <laughs> uh, so revolutionists, you know that I love you and that we are here for you and that we want the best for you and that we hope that you are fulfilling your revolutions in the world. But make sure that you understand what that revolution is. And if you don't, we are here to help you not only answer the question, but move through it. So we will see you the next time. I'm going to give a shout out to this beautiful queen, Kishana Palmer, uh, and all the Thank work that she does in the world. Me. Oh, you know what? But we forgot to ask that one question. Kishana what's the Palmer, question? what's your revolution? Listen, right now it is helping women lead the life they love, pursue and have the career they love, and be healthy AF while doing it. Mm, I love it. Succinct, beautiful, and how we move. That's what we do, revolutionaries. We bring on some of the best people in the world. We will talk to you soon. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Peace.